Originally, the Vagabond Falcon build was supposed to be numbered, but we do so many updates that we stopped. But this is part five because this is a more edited video. We're finally rebuilding our 302 using parts from Advanced Auto. Bruce is beginning by drilling out holes from a 1968 Mustang timing cover. We have to use the Mustang timing cover because it has a hole for a mechanical fuel pump, and we're going to be using a mechanical fuel pump. Bruce discovers that one of the holes had been TIG welded shut, maybe with a plug, a very hard bit of metal. So it took some drilling to get it out. But here it is, it's done. And he also expanded the guide pin holes that allow the 68 valve cover to fit flush with a 1993 302 block. It's time to take the engine off the stand one last time because it needs one last wash. Into the part washer it goes, and with big rubber gloves I clean it. Every last bit of dirt has to get out of it. While we wait for it to dry, I grind. Grind every day. Oh yeah, I'm grinding the stems. Sparks. Toothbrush. Toothbrush keeps it moist and cool. <sighs> Time to blow it dry. Bruce uses the compressed air to make sure all of the solvent and cleaning solution is out of the water jacket. Onto the hand truck it goes and herp -a -darp -a -darp -a -darp -a -darp. We don't put it back on the stand yet. We put it on the floor on top of a lot of towels. The same tool that removes camshaft bearings puts them back in. Camshaft bearings have little cuts in the top of them, little openings to allow the oil channels to not be blocked off. And as you set them in there, you have to check each time to make sure that the orifice in the camshaft bearing matches up with the oil channels running through the block. If you don't do that, your engine will last five minutes. The next step is to take this camshaft, which is only a stock 302 camshaft. We're not doing anything lopy. We're not putting race cams or anything in it. For making a cruising car, stock camshaft is just fine. And again, this camshaft came from Advanced Auto. You lube it up before it goes in. That way, from the very beginning, there's no chance of metal-on-metal metal damage. In it goes, ever so slowly and ever so carefully. The last thing you want is to nick the sides of the cam lobes against any part of the block as it goes in. I was able to grab the shaft <laughs> as Bruce feeds it in. Once a camshaft is in, you need to measure it to make sure it's not drifting too far left and right. Bruce measures it using this thing to measure how far it drifts left and right or in and out. He tells me some people put cams in and they don't do this step. So what they get is a camshaft that's dancing all around the place and causing wear that it shouldn't. He finds that the camshaft is still out of spec a little bit and uses one of those padded hammers to tap it ever so slowly left and right until it's sitting perfectly. Because once it's in, the timing chain will hold it in place. Now that's in and it's to his liking, we lift the block back up on the engine stand. One last bit of polishing into the holes where the freeze out plugs go before he puts the freeze plugs in. There is a machine and there is a special tool for pressing freeze plugs back in. But Bruce said he's done this so many times that a hammer and a right size socket is good enough. All you got to do is hit it in straight. You're good. Don't bend it or anything. We're checking to make sure we have all the gaskets we need from Advanced Auto and they gave us the good stuff. Now we can place the crankshaft bearings in and the crank on top of that and bolt in the two bolt mains. Bruce says it's very important to make sure you have the right crankshaft bearings in the right divots because every single one of them has different oil channels that correspond to different places where the crankshaft sits. He says, I've seen people put these crankshaft bearings in the wrong place and no oil flows. They fire up that engine. That engine won't even run five minutes before it heats up and seizes because no oil flows. Now it's time to torque it to spec. I've never used one of these amazing, really expensive torque wrenches. The kind that beep and vibrate. It's electric. Mm, satisfying. That's a money shot right there. It didn't pop. There's a word for this part here. The springy spider-like thing that holds the lifter spiders in. When we disassembled this thing way back when, I forgot which bolts were for it. I found 
some bolts that fit and thread in, so maybe they're the right ones, maybe they're the wrong ones. Bruce thinks I accidentally grabbed oil pan bolts, but I go back and look and I didn't find any ones that look like them. So Bruce says, well, we'll just use a little boroscope here to look down and make sure that they're not protruding down and not hitting the cam, and if they're the right size, well, well, we'll just go with it. If they hold it in, they don't have to be cranked down a whole lot, so if they work, they work. We're just going to test it. We take the spider back out. And now it's time to put the lifters in. The lifters also came from Advanced Auto. These are roller lifters. It's a roller cam. And these are brand new lifters for a 1993 Ford 302. Mmm, shiny. You gotta lube up the holes first, and then you gotta slide them in. The roller on the roller lifter, the little wheel that's on there, goes horizontally across the block. And they also have a dimple on them, on the roller lifter. Dimple down. <laughs> so you put the roller across with dimple down. And once you get the lifters in, then you place the spider on top of it. The spider, you see how there's a cut on top? It's not a complete circle on the top of the lifter there. You have a cut on the top and the bottom. The lifters are held in place by the spiders. The spiders just sit in there and then that big spring-loaded thing on top that we had to, you know, finagle some bolts for, that presses down on the spiders and holds your lifters in place. Now we can place a timing cover on and something Bruce fished up from the back. See that little lobe on the end of the big gear, the one that's offset? That is what's going to drive the mechanical fuel pump. We went back and forth. Do we want to run an electric fuel pump or do we want to run a mechanical fuel pump? For what we need, most, most electric fuel pumps are put on classic cars because you're running some kind of fuel injection and you need higher PSI. Mechanical fuel pumps only put out maybe 8, pa 8 PSI at most, but since we're running a carburetor, you don't have to run a high pressure fuel line and a mechanical fuel pump is always running fuel. So as long as the engine runs, it runs. Okay, now the crank's in and the timing chain is in. Another thing about American V8, so look at that, it's, it's, a double, it's a double timing chain and that's all the bigger it is because that's all the farther it has to go. Cam's right there, crank's right there. Ooh. Okay, we have a few more freeze-out plugs to go in, and that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much, Bruce, for taking time out of your Saturday. We worked this, he came in on a Saturday for us. So thank you so much for them. Thank you to Advanced Auto for providing all the parts that are gonna go into this, and they provided a lot more. The pistons are gonna go in next, but that's a video for next time. We ran out of time today. There's never enough time when you're building cars. I wish you could just pause time. But then you'd age, right? And and time would stop? That's weird. Oh yeah, one other thing. We were looking for the extra guide pins to go in. One was stuck in the transmission, so you got to heat it up and wiggle it out. And the other one, Bruce, because Bruce shakes his head at me and says, "How did you? How did you jam this plug all the way down inside the head?" He says, "I've never seen him flush like that." But thank goodness he had a punch or a drift chisel, drift chisel, depending on what you want to call it, and was able to tap it out and tap it into the block where it belongs. Oh, it's so satisfying. The engine's coming together, isn't it? We're done tearing down, and this is the beginning of the build back. This was a good day. I had fun today. So thank you for watching this. Now it's time to protect the engine, right? Can't just have it sitting out anymore now that there's fresh parts in there. He added a little bit of oil. Time to put a bag on it and push it aside. I'm going to be doing more grinding, and oh, this little block is going to come together. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week.